Hello, I am talking about where there is no liver specialist. The burden of liver diseases, particularly caused by chronic viral hepatitis B and C, globally is enormous. Indeed, some researchers have demonstrated that a lot more are dying from liver diseases than they were reported many years ago. And the trajectory is actually worse in developing countries, more so because of multiple factors. Chief among is the fact that the specialists are not at post. And so a lot of times patients struggle and those who even can afford are unlikely to find specialists who can manage their liver diseases and or even prescribe appropriate follow-up systems that will enable adequate care. Even if they were there, they would be overwhelmed. For example, in some countries, the prevalence of hepatitis B is about uh, a fifth of the population. That is really, really enormous. And for very few specialists at post, there is definitely a need for role sharing where systems must be in place to enable those who are able to see these patients, reducing cost of travels, to be able to make decisions in regards to treatment. Very lucky is the fact that the WHO has got algorithms in place regarding how to make decisions about the treatment and or monitoring of patients with chronic viral hepatitis, especially in the light of hepatitis B. It is on the background of this that I developed a system that should be able to help uh, specialists who are actually working in countries where there are resources not available and who are available in sparse numbers. This tool is intended to be utilized to make decisions about treatment as well as onward monitoring of patients. They are mostly non-invasive and also make use of available results that the patients would have in order to fast track care and ensure monitoring so that the specialists post would only be limited, we would actually be referred cases that they cannot manage in the communities. Well, here is the app that I promise I would share so you can see how it works. I call it where there is no liver specialist to make appropriate decisions. This is the site of particular interest, which is hepatitis B treatment decision maker. Well, ignore this part, so I will take you to that part. But if a person comes and there is a basic understanding of a serological test that tells us it's acute hepatitis B, you click here, and then it actually tells you monitor, okay? Acute hepatitis B in adults often curable without medications. Consider repeating this test from the date of diagnosis. Well, if you're convinced that the person has chronic hepatitis B based on a persistent hepatitis B surface antigen test for more than six months <clears throat> or some other serological markers indicating so you can click this part and then it reveals this window okay not that the window was not there before and then you this you choose the options if there is evidence of cirrhosis either clinically confirmed or by liver biopsy or no test was done at all or there's no cirrhosis you click on that no cirrhosis okay for fibrosis i will take you uh, to blood test a simple blood test that does not need a liver biopsy uh, and this is where you will get that information done but let's imagine that you establish there's no fibrosis and then where there are resources for hbv dna uh, and you have copies available, perfect. But if you don't have, or 
you have not, you're not, it's not available, at least one of these should be available to help you. For example, you can go here and say not available, or the copies are in that category. And then, should you treat or should you not? So click on that, treat. And then you say the patient, based on this selection, does not qualify for treatment of their chronic hepatitis B in accordance uh, with the WHO guidelines. However, the patient needs to be monitored every three to six or four months, rather. Okay? Let's imagine, like I mentioned, uh, that the e cirrhosis, just one tick of cirrhosis, even if those are negative, it histologically or clinically confirmed, you can do that. And it says the patient qualifies for treatment. Okay? So once there is any choice of any of these indicators, for example, let's imagine there, there is no cirrhosis, but there is advanced fibrosis in some way. Even if there's no uh, viral load, you can click that and it tells you the same thing. Let's reset it so that you can be sure that we're not picking things. Okay, that way, go over here. And you see, it says qualifies for treatment. All right. Uh, the same if you have that, of course, obviously, once it hits that level or this abnormal persistent uh, of liver distortion, then you will also have the same outcome there. Well, the only things that will disqualify for treatment would be if there's no cirrhosis, no fibrosis, no uh, decreased uh, viral load count, it will clear that and say does not qualify. You can always reset it for any new patient. And imagine that the patient comes again with a different outcome, then that clears away and gives you the information for acute hepatitis B. Well, I hope you like that. But let's go back again and let me show you this. If, for example, none of this have been done and you've not got HBV DNA or something and you want to know the fibrosis level. Now, this FIB4 calculator can give you that information based on knowledge of the age of the patient, platelet count, and some liver function test there. Let's imagine the patient is 67 years of age. Okay, let's, let's 63 years of age. And then platelet count is 120. Uh, and then AST, let's imagine 120. And the ALT is 60. Let's imagine that that's the result. And you click on this, see what happens. It gives you a four score of 8.13. Okay, it tells you it's consistent with high risk of advanced liver fibrosis. In which case, you can actually click this path and then determine the outcome here. It tells you that. If, on the other hand, you let's reset this. We can reset this as well. And let's let's imagine this our patient is. Uh, have a platelet count of 150, uh, ASD of 40, ALT of 30. It gives you the outcome there, and it's still 3.07. Okay, let's let's decrease this a bit, increase this a bit, and say this is 190, uh, and uh, this is 30. And do that. Okay, so this is indeterminate for liver fibrosis, in which case you may need to do a liver biopsy. This kind of cases may need to be referred to a specialist center. Of course, these are decisions that could then limit the minority. It's only a minority of patients that would fall into this category, in which case it decreases the burden of referrals. If, for example, you find that the patient has a mild fibrosis by this outcome there's no risk of lymph fibrosis that you can select no fibrosis no uh, cirrhosis and then uh, low viral count you click that then it says does not qualify for treatment but needs to be monitored again on this very same app within the same interface you can actually uh, prognosticate in terms of cirrhosis this is Charles Q calculator which is only relevant for those who have cirrhosis already that you can uh, select based on the blood count albumin and INR it's fully functional 
Uh, for example, you select whatever you can here, and then you see what comes up. It tells you, it gives you all of that reading together. Okay, so really, a lot of things can be done via this app, and uh, it's a very is intended to be used in developing countries. And I hope you will join me in some way by writing some comments and get us started with some pilot in particular centers that are struggling with a care of hepatitis B patients. This is really something that I would really like to collaborate with people. I will value your comments. Perhaps you're out there, especially who needs to know and to ask me questions. Please send me some information as well and I can help. This is copyrighted and uh, it is something that we can collaborate and discuss uh, in the face of global health and support for the public, particularly in developing countries. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Clearly, there's a task for us to do. It's pragmatic. Do me a favor, share this. It may get to a center that may want to trial this and we can change the paradigm of care that should be available to our people. If we limit care to only specialist centers, we will not be able to reach out. And of course, it is on the backdrop of the limited specialists that many of our patients are actually believing in uh, some superstitious practices and taking some herbs that are further damaging their systems. And so family physicians, community health personnel, and so on. If you have a center that wants to try this out, I will be very eager to share this with you and uh, to see whether it agrees, compare it actually with the WHO system. And if you want, you can get access to me, put a comment through, and I will be in touch with you. Uh, at the bottom in the comment section of this video and uh, we will be on board to do something that can change the paradigm. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.